Welcome, Speaker. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm always glad to be back in Orlando, and it's a, just a great city to visit. Can we start with Donald Trump saying that <laughs> Muslims should not be allowed to enter this country? What did, what's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction is that you have Trump on one extreme and Obama on the other. And Obama wants to explain to us that anybody can come here because we can trust the government. And Obama and Trump saying they can't come because you can't trust the government. And the truth is somewhere in the middle. We need a much better vetting process. We need to be honest about how dangerous this is. And you look at the woman who was a killer in California, came out of a mosque in, in Pakistan, which is famous for radicalizing people, uh, and yet didn't get picked up at all. So I think, I think Trump went much too far. But in a way, it's in reaction to Obama, who's unwilling to take seriously the protection of Americans. Is that what you got out of his speech on Sunday? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that uh, the fact is that the president finds it very difficult. The first time I can remember he ever even acknowledged, for example, that the Fort Hood killing was a terrorist act. I mean, they spent years telling us this was workplace violence. Um, I think it's a very serious problem, and I think that we have to recognize that the president's position, for example, on Syrian refugees is delusional. I mean, we, we have no ability to vet whether or not these people are, 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 are terrorists. None. Um, remember, they, they told us after Paris, you didn't have to worry. But Homeland Security actually issued a statement. There's no credible threat in the U.S. Well, the truth is, the, the threats you have to worry about are the ones you don't know about. And the fact that all these years later they still haven't learned this, I find very sobering. To extend on that, you know, Central Florida is built on the businessmen, the entrepreneur. Do you think with Trump's uh, suggested ban, I mean, does it read as if we could be closed, closed off to business opportunities? That's a lifeblood here in our community. No, I, look, I, for, first of all, I think even Trump is going to rapidly modulate what he said. Uh, but we need to have a much better visa program. I mean, when I look at how hard it is, here's the problem. We make it so hard for honest tourists who want to come here to spend money or business people who want to come here to invest that if you go to a place like Brazil, it's embarrassing how hard it is to come to America. So we need to have something like a trusted traveler program and really enroll the, the five or six hundred million people most likely to travel. I mean, the truth is the tourist you want to have come here has money, has an identity, almost certainly has credit cards. There ought to be some way to build a totally new modern visa program that makes it, that says to the world, if you're honest and you just want to come here to do business or you want to come here to study or you want to come here to be a tourist, we want to make it easy and accessible. If on the other hand, you don't have a record, you know, you don't have credit cards, we can't figure out who you are, we're going to make it really hard for you to come here. Now, it shouldn't be that hard to have two boxes. But the way the current government operates, they do, they, 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 the level of incompetence in our bureaucracies is a major problem in trying to do things. I, I find it kind of fascinating that the first thing out of your mouth when we asked about Trump wasn't about how horrible what he said was. Is he a huge th threat to the Republican Party? No. Why not? Well, why would you think he's a threat to the Republican Party? First of all, he articulates for millions of people what they believe. Uh, and, and the fact is that there are a lot of people very fed up with a Washington government that refuses to be honest about problems, refuses to be honest about terrorism, refuses to be honest about the source of that terrorism. Um, <clears throat> and I think you'd find that there are a substantial number of people that would be. Now, I, do I think Trump went too far? Sure. But I think he was also making a symbolic point. Uh, when you have a president and a secretary of state who are literally delusional about the world. You know, I'll give you an example. We have an agreement with Iran about nuclear weapons, except it turns out it's not a contract and they're not going to sign it. And then it turns out, well, it's not really quite an agreement. Then it turns out the day after we announce it, the Ayatollah Khamenei leads a crowd in Tehran chanting death to America. Now, how out of touch with reality do you have to be to not figure out that when your opponent is chanting death to America, they may mean it. Now we've had the Iranians have two intercontinental ballistic missile tests, both in violation of the UN agreement. 
And this administration just sleepwalks as though nothing's happened. And that's why you're getting Trump in reaction to Obama. The weaker Obama is, the more people look for strength. And so, even, even if the strength is misguided. So you'll support him if he's the nominee? I'm, I'm going to support the Republican nominee, sure. I mean, if the alternative is Hillary Clinton, it's very easy for me to support the Republican nominee. Um, uh, on the topic of, just to change gears a little bit, um, the idea of, of a mass deportation of illegal immigrants is something that uh, could possibly affect Central Florida and our tourism industry, construction, it restaurants. It will never happen. Okay. I, I campaigned in 2012, and you may remember, mm -hmm. and I said at the time, you're not going to get self-deportation. Grandmother is not going to leave. What can happen is a path to legality. Uh, and and uh, even uh, somebody who's a very sophisticated person, uh, like uh, Senator Hutchison in, in, in uh, Texas, uh, K. Billy Hutchison, back in 2007 had a proposal that said you would go back home to get a visa and come right back. It would take 48 hours, uh, but you would then be inside the legal system. We, we have to find a way to get to legality without necessarily getting to citizenship. And I think we have to find a way that doesn't punish people who obeyed the law and waited. I mean, there's something wrong if you have two cousins and one has been waiting patiently to follow the rules and the other one cheated. And, we're, and now we're going to take care of the one who cheated. So we're not going to have mass deportation. It's not going to happen. But I suspect we are going to find a way to have very substantial penalties uh, and, and to get people in into the uh, within the law uh, and then uh, be very tough with people who don't take advantage of that. I mean, if, if you have a three or four year program and at the end of that time you have some folks around here who have not done what they should, I think then those folks could be subject to, to deportation. Who do you support as the nominee, if anyone? I am for whoever we nominate. I think it's, you know, when, when you have a year that has Donald Trump and Ben Carson, okay, let I me mean, just start from there, totally different personalities. Uh, you look at, at Cruz and Rubio, in a sense, those are the top four right now. Now, nobody in January would have said to you, these are going to be the top four. And so I just think this, year, this is a year that the, the pressures on the American people are, are so enormous and the, the level of anger is so deep that I don't think we can, we can predict right now how the next six or eight months are going to work out. <coughs> Excuse me. You were in a similar position a front runner about kind of the same time far yeah, out the, as we the, are. What advice would you give to, well, to I mean, the, the, the biggest the biggest difference is that I didn't have any money. So when I came out of South Carolina, Romney in Florida could drown me and he did. I mean he began running ads three weeks before we even got to Florida. Um, nobody's gonna outspend Trump. This is why it's a real dilemma. Carson uh, who's got to recover from his national security weaknesses but Carson has uh, almost 500,000 donors now. Uh, Rubio is clearly, and Cruz have proven to be very good fundraisers. So the top four people, I think, are going to be around. I mean, it's, it's going to take a while to sort this out. And of course, Jeb Bush, who was, who was a great governor, and is, uh, I think a great policy guy, is one of the real surprises, as, as is Chris Christie and John Kasich, because I would have thought they'd be doing better than they currently are, because they're all three really competent people. Um, since you're here today to speak to Central Florida's <coughs> business leaders, you know how crucial is this election to the business culture here in Florida and, and how we succeed as, a, as an industry? Well, I, look, I think it makes a big difference because I think if you had a president who was for aggressive growth and a president who was willing to modernize the bureaucracy and really try to get to the kind of things that you, you experience in the private sector, uh, I mean, take, for example, how easy it is to go all around the world and use your, your automatic teller machine card and get money in usually about 11 seconds and ask yourself, why couldn't you have a trusted traveler program of comparable capability, but it's, it's, it's totally messed up in the State Department. Their entire visa program is totally messed up. And that costs Central Florida money because it means you, got, you have a lot of folks who'd like to come here uh, who, frankly, can't get through the visa process, not because they're bad people, because the process is so messed up. You um, would advise the candidates, the, the top four now, get a lot of money, that's your advice? <laughs> well, no, no, look, I think the first thing you gotta recognize is if you don't have the resources to play, then you can't stay in the game. Uh, and I think that, that's, that that would be my first thing. And the second thing is um, I think people want 
somebody who is tough, but who has a positive vision of America's future, somebody who makes you feel good that, you know, if they were in charge, we'd get things fixed, not just somebody who's angry and tells you what's wrong. So I think there's a big advantage in this kind of environment to have a, and I think this has frankly been one of the things that Marco Rubio has done well, is to stay positive, to stay looking at, you know, a better future, to talk about the great changes we need in a positive way. Uh, and I think that's part of what people are looking for. Speaker, thank you so sure. much for joining thank us today. Thank you for today. your time. It's always fun to be in Orlando.